Hello, I am the Notherian, and this is the fifth in a series of six videos in which I illustrate each of the six faction combinations in the newly released Soulforge draft mode. This is pack one, pick one. Uh, starting at the bottom, I think that Botanimate and Metasculpt are both uh, interesting cards in draft. Uh, they're both situational uh, threat removal. I don't mind having either a Metasculpt or a Botanimate in my draft deck, but neither of them is consistently strong enough that I would want to first pick it. Uh, Forge Guardian Gamma. So, being able to activate a Forge Guardian Gamma and put the pieces of a Forge Guardian Omega together is really exciting in draft. I've seen it done in draft. It's fun, but it's not consistent, and if I'm playing to win, I'm just not going to uh, push that strategy. I think Witherfrost Succubus is actually a very reasonable first pick. I've had some luck with Witherfrost Succubus in a particularly Aloyan plus Necrium decks. Uh, works well with Charnel Titan, works well when you're playing uh, Armored Creatures. So I don't mind first picking a Witherfrost Succubus, but in this case, uh, I think the clear pick is Ferocious Roar. So uh, as a player who enjoys aggressive decks, I think Ferocious Roar is uh, one of my favorite cards to first pick, period. Uh, in particular, it's a very flexible card. I think it works well in pretty much all of the... Uh, uh, Utera decks, um, all of the faction pairings, uh, can work well in the Swarm deck with Necrium, get your Roar onto a lot of creatures, uh, or else it can work with uh, Aloyan or Tempest, getting your Roar on a smaller number of more powerful creatures to create uh, threats that are hard for your opponent to deal with. So, um, very happy to first pick Ferocious Roar here and in, in almost any pack. Uh, I just uh, really like Ferocious Roar in uh, the current draft environment. So I'm going to take Roar and see what this pick offers me. So I'm not particularly excited about uh, the Sparkbot or the Zombie Infantry. Either one of them are very reasonable cards to end up in a draft deck, but neither of them are cards that uh, push me into uh, that particular color. So uh, I think in this case I'm going to grab Cavern Hydra. Uh, Cavern Hydra works well with Ferocious Roar. Any regenerating creature likes the uh, Utera growth spells like Ferocious Roar or Enrage. Uh, so I think I'm happy to pick a Hydra here. Morrow Fiend is uh, a great blocking card. Um, I wouldn't mind having a Morrow Fiend in the deck, but again, it's not one that's going to push me to go uh, into Necrium. So uh, let's try Cavern Hydra and put off my decision of what my second faction should be. Ah. Uh, and here we have Stormcaller. So uh, Stormcaller is one of my favorite creatures to roar. Um, if you can hit hitting Stormcaller with a Ferocious Roar creates a 10-8 creature. Very hard for many decks to deal with, especially if you're hitting something else large in addition to the Stormcaller. Um, I've started games before with like a turn 1 Prowler, turn 2 Stormcaller, and Ferocious Roar creates a setup that's just very, very hard to deal with. So... Um, in an aggressive deck, um, I'm happy to go with um, Stormcaller to uh, complement my Ferocious Roar. Uh, Bear Rider and Toxic Spores are uh, reasonable cards, but not ones I'm excited about. Uh, Rune Scarred Zombie. Uh, so, Rune Scarred Zombie uh, works well in spell heavy decks, but not Utera spell heavy decks. In particular, uh, most of the Utera spells tend to be things that are uh, um, buffing or growing creatures, and uh, Runescarred Zombie is a generally a poor choice to play like an Enrage or a Roron, uh, because the 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 Runescarred Zombie ability makes you want the Runescarred Zombie to die the turn you play the spell, uh, which of course has poor synergy with Ferocious Roar, which is good for creatures you want to keep around. So anyway, I'm happy to take Stormcaller, and I'm looking to draft an aggressive uh, Tempest Utera deck. Uh, let's see. So uh, I think the pick here is probably Primal Surge. Uh, I'm not not particularly happy about Primal Surge because it uh, it slows down my aggression, but it uh, can be a useful card mid to late game if you have it leveled. 
Um, I've gotten good use out of Primal Surge on occasion. Uh, probably not a card I'm going to play a lot, but uh, I don't mind having one in my deck. Uh, Ghost Scale Cobra is another reasonable card. It's a fine blocking creature. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to take the uh, the Cobra instead. It's a, it's a fine blocking creature. The thing I like about Cobra is that uh, can put level 1 Cobra in front of most level 2 creatures and have them die in a couple turns, which... Uh, when I'm pushing aggressively in other lanes, um, I'm willing to take a couple damage and wait for something to die with poison. Uh, so, also good for finishing off a creature that uh, is already wounded. So, yeah, I think I'm going to take the Ghost Scale Cobra instead. Um, it's not a great card in a uh, an aggressive deck, but um, I don't... The thing is, uh, I really just want, in this type of an aggressive deck, all of my early plays to have a lot of board impact, and Primal Surge just doesn't have the type of board impact that I'm hoping for in an aggressive deck. Uh, ah, so speaking of cards that can have board impact, uh, both Zephyr Mage and Grove Matriarch are... Uh, yeah, are exciting cards uh, in an aggressive deck. Zephyr Mage is a great way to... Uh, uh, get your creatures to connect with your opponent. Um, your opponent finally finds an answer to your 7-7 uh, seven, seven Prowler, and you just step it over to another lane, and uh, he has to come up with a new answer. Uh, Grove Matriarch. Uh, because Grove Matriarch leaves behind uh, a body, Grove Matriarch trades really well at all levels. Uh, I think I'm going to take the Zephyr Mage, although I'd love to get a Grove Matriarch in my deck at some point. Uh, let's see. So... Uh, looking at this pack, uh, Stonefist Giant, um, uh, strong card, uh, I think is a card that's commonly underrated in draft. Uh, one of the strongest level 2 creatures in the game, also has a good level 3 body. I'm not sure whether or not I want a Stonefist Giant in uh, this type of aggressive deck, because the 3-6 body early game uh, can slow me down. On the other hand, Stonefist Giant really loves Ferocious Roar, uh, really likes the Uterra Growth spells, so I, I consider a Stonefist Giant here, although there's also a good chance that I can pick one up later on. Speaking of cards that I can probably pick up later on, uh, Primordial Slam, um, a card that I think is also underrated in draft, a good way of uh, closing out a game, finishing off a low-health opponent, uh, works very well with move creatures. Uh, also works well with breakthrough creatures like Prowler. Uh, so I uh, could take Primordial Slam. Uh, I think my pick here is Cinderfist Brawler, just because Stonefist Giant and Primordial Slam are things that are fairly easy to pick up later on. Uh, I think I'm going to grab the Cinderfist Brawler. I already have the Zephyr Mage. Cinderfist Brawler really likes cards like Zephyr Mage or uh, cards like... Uh, uh, Aerial Surge or Fervent Assault, Windcaller Shaman, things that give me move. So I think I'll take the the Cinderfist Brawler and uh, see if I can pick up a little bit of move to help him uh, connect with my opponent. Uh, I think Cinderfist Brawler serves a similar purpose in a deck as Swamp Moss Lurker. Uh, Swamp Moss Lurker is a little bit better blocker than Cinderfist Brawler, although the, both of them have strong level 1 stats. And I might be able to get use out of the Cinderfist ability. Also, uh, if I ever get Ferocious Roar leveled up to level 3, uh, Cinderfist Brawler loves Ferocious Roar 3, which just gives all of your creatures uh, breakthrough. Uh, probably not going to happen for me very often, but it's uh, a fun way to win a game when it works. So I'll try the Cinderfist Brawler here. And uh, we'll therefore be looking for ways to, uh, um, to allow my Cinderfist Brawler to connect. Uh, going to take another Stormcaller here. Um, I think that in a deck with Ferocious Roar, um, in a deck that's trying to be aggressive early game, I can't have too many Stormcallers. Uh, also, I would like to pick up a Warbringer Aranti in this deck. I think uh, Warbringer Aranti is good in fairly aggressive decks. Um, again, when uh, decks with a little bit of move, um, useful when you have a uh, an unblocked creature to uh, really punish your opponent for it, uh, can also be useful for uh, turning an uneven trade into an even trade. So uh, I'd like to pick up the Aranti at some point, but for the time being I don't think I can have too many Stormcallers. Uh, pick here is going to be Windcaller Shaman. Windcaller Shaman's a good utility card. 
Uh, given that I already have the Cinderfist Brawler in my deck, um, I like having ways for it to connect. Uh, Wind Color Shaman also uh, uh, works well with Ferocious Roar. Um, a 5-9 uh, a Wind Color Shaman is uh, um, difficult for a number of decks to handle. Uh, here the pick is between Swamp Moss Lurker and Grove Matriarch. Uh, so um, because I have uh, so many Storm Callers in this deck, I think Storm Caller is just uh, a better creature for an aggressive deck than uh, Swamp Moss Lurker. Uh, the 6 power just makes it much harder to deal with early game. Lurker has better late game stats, but since I'm really trying to close things out early, I'd rather have Callers than Lurkers. Uh, I'm going to take the Grove Matriarch. I think that... Uh, um, I think I've been really pleased with uh, how Grove Matriarch has worked out in uh, in draft and fairly aggressive decks. So, uh, wouldn't mind having a uh, a lurker, but uh, certainly not something I'm going to prioritize. Uh, Bramblewood Guardian, uh, probably not a card I will end up playing much, but uh, you know has reasonable level two and three stats, so uh, um, I could get value from it. Um, again, I did just Flame Speaker. This is not the deck for Flame Speaker. Uh, so here I believe I'm going to take my Warbringer Aranti. Uh, would like to pick up a Feral Instinct at some point in the draft. Uh, perhaps this is a good time to pick up a Feral Instinct, but uh, uh, going to grab the uh, the Warbringer Aranti instead. I just uh, really like having those in my um, relatively aggressive Tempest decks. Uh, this is a tough call. So, uh, choice here, uh, Bright Tusk Sower is, um, two bodies for one card. Uh, aggressive deck, I always like getting two bodies for one card. Uh, works well with Ferocious Roar because you're bringing in a, uh, a little seedling to eat the, uh, the Roar effect. Um, so, couldn't go wrong with a Bright Tusk Sower. Uh, Rhymehorn Charger with its move is a really good aggressive card. Has great stats at level 1 and 2. Ha, poor stats at level 3, but I'm hoping that my games will be mostly over by then. I think Rhymehorn Charger is going to be the pick here. Um, also Enrage. Uh, would be very happy to have an Enrage in this deck. Uh, quite a few creatures that wear an Enrage well. Enrage works well on most high health creatures. Uh, making it, uh, uh, difficult for your opponent to uh, to get them off the field. So I'm going to take Rhymehorn Charger. I hate passing up the Enrage, but uh, I think the Rhymehorn Charger is just better in this aggressive deck. Uh, speaking of Enrage, uh, Strength in Numbers, a uh, very similar card to Enrage. It is better than Enrage in a Swarm deck. If you only have one or two creatures on the board, it's slightly worse than Enrage. But uh, I've certainly had good success with uh, Strength in Numbers. I think Strength in Numbers is going to be my pick here. Um, one note, uh, Mossbeard Patriarch. This is the wrong deck for a Mossbeard Patriarch, but I have had good success with uh, Mossbeard Patriarch in draft. It's a card that I never play with in Constructed, but the ability for the level 1 Patriarch mid to late game to heal 10 damage off of another more threatening creature is really quite useful. So, um, Mossbeard Patriarch, um, particularly in an Aloyan plus Utera deck, I and mean, if you have something like a Forge Plate Sentry 3, uh, or a Forge Guardian Beta 3, and you can heal it back up to full health using your level 1 Patriarch, uh, you can create all sorts of problems for your opponent. So I, uh, I like Patriarch reasonably well in draft, but I don't think this is the right deck for it. So I'm going to take a Strength in Numbers. Uh, also, the Strength in Numbers makes me value cards like uh, Grove Matriarch and Bright Tusk Sower a little bit more highly than I otherwise would. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, as I said previously, I don't think I can have too many Storm Callers in this kind of deck. And, uh... Hmm. Um... Probably Hunter, Hunting Pack and Ravenger, neither one of them are cards I'm going to play much of. Uh, with the Roar and the Strength of Numbers, I guess I grab a Hunting Pack. Um, hunting Pack can be useful uh, late game to block two creatures while you try to push forward uh, the last bit of damage. 
I'll take the hunting pack, but I don't think I'm going to get much use out of it. Uh, pick here is Magma Hound. Um, just a great utility card. Uh, very happy to have a Magma Hound in any Tempest deck that I draft. Uh, hmm. Uh, Spiritfire Mystic is interesting. I've had the most success with Spiritfire Mystic in... Or Spirit Flame Mystic, sorry. Uh, in Tempest Necrium decks, where uh, Spirit Flame Mystic can... Um, where Spirit Flame Mystic can serve as uh, Sacrifice Fodder. Um, it's uh, good with, like, Corpse Crawler and Grave Pact in particular, since you can uh, take an injured Spirit Flame Mystic and decide when it dies. So I've, I've generally liked uh, Spirit Flame Mystic in those type of decks. I don't like it so much in this kind of aggressive deck. Uh, Lightning Spark is just a good utility card. Very happy to have a Lightning Spark in my deck. Uh, but... I think for the type of deck I'm trying to run that I just, I want as many large level 1 bodies as possible. So I'm going to take the Rhymehorn Charger. Uh, hopefully that's the right pick. The Lightning Spark's really close. Um, would love to get a Lightning Spark at some point. Ha. Huh. Hard choice here. Uh, Ashurian Mystic is an excellent card. In particular... It's a good card in this type of aggressive deck where I'm hoping that uh, my Stormcallers and my Rhymehorn Chargers give me some advantage on the board early on. And when I have some advantage on the board, uh, Ashurian Mystic is just a great way to uh, uh, magnify that advantage. Because if I have creatures that my opponent is having trouble dealing with, tossing out a Mystic, which is then another creature which they absolutely have to deal with, is um, uh, very problematic. I think I'm going to take the Mystic here. Um, Sower and Primordial Slam are other cards that I'd like to get into this deck. Um, I think I only have one Aranti Warbringer, so uh, a Primordial Slam would be good in the deck, but uh, uh, I'm going to take the Mystic here. Um, I think this is where I pick up my Feral Instinct. Uh, Flamestoke Shaman isn't bad. Uh, wouldn't mind a Flamestoke Shaman. I guess it's useful for helping my, uh, the Cinderfist Brawler connect. Uh, but the, uh, uh, it's a little bit situational. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it works wonderfully, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and, uh, just having one Feral Instinct in the deck to, uh, to help me close out the game is, uh, is something that I put a lot of value on. So... I guess I have... Do I have enough move? The question, I guess, is do I have enough move to uh, um, ensure that I can uh, uh, close out games effectively without Feral Instinct? Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to change my mind. I'll, uh, I'll try the Flamestoke Shaman. Again, I being able to get one Feral Instinct in the deck uh, just to make sure I always have outs... It, the thing I worry about with an aggressive deck like this is that I get a bunch of damage through to my opponent early, and then at some point during the game, uh, his big creatures start coming out, and he's able to take control of the board back away from me. And when that happens, uh, I want to make sure that I still have cards in my deck that can allow me to um, finish off my opponent. Ashurian Mystic is one such card. Lightning Spark would be another card, but I don't happen to have a Lightning Spark in my deck. Uh, but I'll, I'll try the Flamestoke Shaman. Again, Flamestoke Shaman is another card that could help me finish out games. Uh, and uh, I'll take another Hydra here. Uh, so, ten cards left. Um, I think the choice here is between a second Mystic or a third Rhinehorn Charger. Uh, could take a Sower. Um, again, with the strength in numbers, a Sower certainly wouldn't be a bad pick. Uh, Venom Fang is also just a nice utility card. I wouldn't mind having a Venom Fang in this deck, but I think I'm going to take the extra Mystic. I uh, think uh, Mystic is, is good in aggressive decks, especially uh, uh, for magnifying uh, early game board advantage, if I'm able to, uh, to pick that up. Uh, ooh... Uh, tough call. I think the pick here is between the second Magma Hound or a uh, first Nargoth Bruiser. Uh, Nargoth Bruiser is, uh, again, another really good utility card. Um, in particular, he's very flexible because you can have him um, uh, activate on himself. 
in order to give you a solid vanilla creature, or he can uh, affect another lane uh, by uh, allowing a creature uh, in another lane to survive. Uh, hmm. Really hate to pass up the Magma Hound, which I think is just excellent. Although I... Uh, with three Stormcallers in the deck, I think that Nargoth Bruiser on a Stormcaller is, uh, uh, is just an excellent early gameplay. And I'd like to have that available to me. Also, Nargoth Bruiser on a Cavern Hydra uh, can be very strong. So I'm going to take the Bruiser. Uh, take a Stonefist Giant. The, the problem with Stonefist Giant is I need to look for situations to play him where I'm not going to get... Uh, where it's not going to cost me momentum early game. Because uh, this really is an early game deck. On the other hand... If I can sneak in an early game Stonefist Giant without getting behind, uh, level two Stonefist Giant can uh, can dominate games, particularly with cards like uh, uh, Ferocious Roar or Strength in Numbers. So I'll take the Stonefist Giant here. Uh, um, okay, uh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Uh, Deep Branch Prowler. I think that Deep Branch Prowler is an easy pick for this deck. Uh, and goes very well with the uh, storm callers for early game offense. Uh, and I think my pick here is Lightning Brand. Uh, Cadaverous Thicket is just not a very good aggressive card. Uh, works reasonably well in uh, in swarm decks. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, if you produce um, produce threats in a lot of lanes, it's easy for your uh, Cadaverous Thicket to uh, to get ignored and get some damage through. Uh, also, it's a card that wears an Enrage very well, but uh, uh, I'm going to take the Lightning Brand, uh, since Lightning Brand now... Uh, Lightning Brand 1 works on both uh, level 1 and level 2 creatures. Um, even mid to late game, uh, tossing a Lightning Brand on a, uh, for example, Stormcaller 2 uh, or a uh, Prowler 2 uh, can be a really good way to uh, uh, finish off an opponent, so... I'll take the Lightning Brand. Hmm. Ha 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 This is a tough call. So, uh, second Bruiser. Bruiser is still good for uh, all the reasons I've mentioned. Uh, Stormcaller is still uh, an excellent card. I have three Stormcallers. I also have a, a Deep Branch Prowler. But, I mean, Stormcaller is just uh, uh, really the heart of this deck. I can't have too many. Uh, wouldn't mind a Primordial Slam, wouldn't mind another Flamestoke Shaman. Uh, I've gotten good use out of Aerial Surge. I think that I'm probably not going to take the Aerial Surge here, but in general I've gotten uh, good use out of Aerial Surge. Uh, it's a good way of helping uh, creatures uh, like Cinderfist Brawler or even just, you know, large-ish creatures like Stormcaller to uh, connect with my opponent. Hmm. Uh... Flamestoke Shaman, Stormcaller, Bruiser. Ah, ah, tough decisions here. Ah. I think, hmm, think I'm going to take the Bruiser. I think that uh, I think this hard to turn down that Stormcaller, but uh, I think I'm going to take the Bruiser. I think this deck just really wants uh, ways to uh, to keep my dangerous creatures alive. And so, uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to take a second bruiser here. Uh, I think I'm very happy to have an enrage. Again, I don't have, I have a strength in numbers already. Um, giving myself one more growth card uh, seems quite good. Uh, interesting situation here. Um, I think Frostwild Tracker is not very good in this deck because I really don't want to play a 4-2 body early game. Uh, I just, I really don't want to play a 4-2 body early game, although a mid-game being able to put out like Frostwild Tracker 2 and using it to toss out a Prowler 1 is uh, uh, quite strong indeed. Uh, I think my pick here is actually Aquatic Embrace. Uh, Aquatic Embrace is... Um, really a pretty bad card in Constructed, but I've gotten good use out of it in Draft. Uh, particularly Aquatic Embrace is good on a card like Ashurian Mystic, a card which is very threatening and your opponent just wants to get rid of it quickly, and Aquatic Embrace can prevent them from doing that. 
So I'll take the Aquatic Embrace. Uh, here I just take a, a Fangwood Ravenger. Um, yeah, this is not the deck for either Flame Speaker or Disintegrate. And for my final pick, I'm going to uh, take a Cadaverous Thicket. Uh, and uh, I think this is the deck. Um, I think this should be a really fun, uh, aggressive deck to play. Uh, I always enjoy playing aggressive decks. So uh, hope to see you back here shortly for uh, game number one.